Well, I'm fighting uh, now for Bellator. I just signed a really cool contract with them and excited about that. Uh, fighting at UC Irvine, Brent Center, against Savant Young at the uh, lightweight, in the lightweight division at 155. And yes, I'm a big 155 right now. I still gotta lose a lot of weight. Uh, the weight cut's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be a weight cut. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be difficult. Um, but yeah, looking forward to it. Fighting in my hometown, I went to school. Um, Elementary school, I went to you know Westwood Basics Plus, that was in Irvine. Went to Lakeside Middle School, that was in Irvine. Went to Woodbridge uh, High School, that was in Irvine. Uh, my first apartment was in Irvine. I grew up there most of my life, and you know fighting there is going to be a really cool to be. There's a positive and a negative in everything. Obviously, the positives of fighting so close to home is you have all that support, you have all that comfort. You're sleeping in your own bed. You're just you got that home court advantage, but at the same time, it kind of works against you because you have some added pressures. You know, you got family, friends, you got more expectations. And as for me, I feel like I have even more because the last time I did fight in my home court, it was in the UFC at UFC 121 against um, uh, Daniel Roberts, and I didn't I didn't fight my fight. It wasn't me out there. And uh, yeah, so now I'm like, gotta, I, I got that against me too. So I gotta go out there and perform, and uh, there's a positive and negative in everything. And you know, I'm just gonna take the positives and keep rolling with it. James Wilkes, you know, training for this camp, you know, my main, my main guy is James Wilkes. We have an uh, academy here in Lake Forest, uh, or Laguna Hills, Lightning in the May. Uh, but we've known each other for freaking 12, 13 years. We know everything about each other. He knows where I'm at inside, head-wise, and knows how to push me when I need encouragement, when he needs to jump on me. Um, and having other fighters like Johnny Cisneros, who's he's one of the huge up-and-coming fighters we got. He's eight and one. He's just a freaking beast. Um, R.J. Clifford, Blake. We have a we have a small group of guys. We don't have no freaking 10, 20 man rooms like you see maybe at Greg Jackson's or you know different places like that. It's just a small group of guys. We all know what uh, we need and we fill in our spots. The deficiency we the deficiencies we have very well and uh, it's just I love it. You know, it's a little family and they know how to press me. So where am I at where, with all that stuff and how I feel? I feel really lucky, blessed, fortunate. I'm taking things, you know, the second time around now that it is literally coming full circle, coming back home. It's, uh, I'm really taking, uh, absorbing, absorbing, you know, everything, all the, all the things I'm fortunate to have, you know. I know there's a ton of people that wish they could say they fight professionally. I know there's a ton of people that say they wish they fought in, you know, any organization, let alone the biggest ones that have been around, you know. UFC is freaking... Uh, IFL, now Bellator, you know, fighting the years I have, it's just, it's really cool, it's a, it's a trip, you know, when I started off, I was just a young kid, just plugging away, and, you know, over the years, it's just kind of worn on me, and, I just, there's too much to say, there's so many emotions inside me about this fight, and just my whole career, and it's all coming together, you know, and I, I love it, you know, I really actually, I love it. I'm not, it's not something that's bad for me. I think it's something that's great, and uh, it's showing me all the positives I have with the people, my friends, the media, you guys, fucking every, sorry, <laughs> everybody, you know. It's just really cool. It makes me feel good inside. For the fans out there and for the people that see us, Especially the higher level guys that fight. If you if you're on TV, you're obviously one of the higher level fighters, or you're in an organization that's on TV. You're a higher level You're a high level fighter. I wish people knew like really what it took to do it. It's not just being physical and in shape or whatever. It's just there's so many pressures. It's so tightly wound around this little moment of time that you're judged upon. Your pay, your, your pay depends on it, your reputation, you, you may have a school, you may have this. There's so many things on the table at that for that one little moment of time. There, you, there's no words, there's no nothing. Unless you actually do it, there's no, there's no words. It's just too much stress, too much 
for me, like going into a fight, picture this, you're going into a fight, uh, you get scheduled to fight three months ahead of time, two months ahead of time, you're gonna fight another guy. All he does all day is train to fight you in everything you do. He knows everything about you, he knows what you like to do, your tendencies. Uh, he's studying just to beat you, and then at the same time, your pay, let's say when I, when, if you win, you make good money. If you lose, you can make good money, but if you lose, you only get one check. <laughs> you win, you get another check, and then you also may get sponsor checks. It, it's just so many things that go into play on that one moment in time. It's just, there's just too much stress. It's such a hard thing, uh, unless you do it. I just wish people knew, you know? It, it's just like you said on that. It's now the people have come full circle as far as their training. You know, the everybody's now great at jiu-jitsu, great at wrestling, great at striking. And put them all together and dieting right. It's just a matter who's going to put up and keep putting out and pushing themselves. When you want to stop is when you want to push harder. The harder you can push when you want to stop is that's what's going to make you the winner. That's what's going to make you the champion. And that's the hard part. Because when you want to stop, when you're so tired, you're sore, or you're stuck in a position, and you know you got to move, but you got no like energy left in you, you feel like you're going to die, and that's when you got to put it out, and that's when you got it's just, that's what makes the winner, you know? Because you break right then and there, and you just kind of give in, you lost, you're done. So when I go to train, I get so wound up, you know, I get so, like the last round, I was, I think I won most of the rounds going into my last one, and I was winning that round, I know for sure my last, but at the last 10 seconds, I gave up a takedown. Ooh, that makes me mad. That right there could be the difference between winning and losing, and to, to break and give up that right there, I'm so mad right now, and this is after I've been, this is what, 30 minutes ago I did this? I'm pissed. That shouldn't, that's unacceptable to me. And when you, you're training at a high level and you want to succeed and you want to do well, there's no, there's no room there to make it happen. What's giving me the drive now, it's, there's, this isn't about, how do I word this? It's just, I want to go out my way, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm 38 years old. There's only so long I'm going to be able to do this. And no matter what happens, I, I don't care about belts and whatever. I just want to win. I want to go in there, compete, win, and do things my way and quit on my terms. Not because of the medications I was on hindering me and like dulling me down going into a fight. I want to, if I lose, if I, if I lose, I want to beat it guns blazing, battle it and show them what I could do and I, I could walk away and I could be good. But other than that, right now, it's just proving a point. I want to go out there and get wins. I want to dominate people. I want to compete. I don't care much about anything except having my hand raised and competing at a high level. You know, I love it. It's the only thing I got. It's the only thing... For me, I feel like it's the only thing I got. That and teaching. And it's like, if I don't have that, I'm like, oh. You know, so I'm going to give it up. <laughs> it doesn't matter who I fight. I love Savant, you know. I want to sit down with Savant freaking in 10 years, hopefully, and say, dude, that was a freaking good fight. We beat the crap out of each other. That would be cool as hell. I want to compete, do well, show people what I could do. And I want to bring everybody up around me. And what I mean by that is, this isn't a selfish thing. This isn't about me going out and getting a win just for me. No, I want, this is for my training partners, my friends, my family. This is for fans. This is for people that hate me, that don't like me, and that talk crap. I understand life. I understand people. And that's one of the things that bummed me out. I want to do everything as best as I can, as good. I want to treat everybody as best I can on the way up and down, no matter what. So I know I left it all out for everybody. No one could sit there and say, oh, he really is a dick or this or that. If they want to hit on me because I'm being super nice to everybody and trying to do everything positive, that is fine. It speaks about that person. And it's just, I want to do everything good 
bring everybody up, put a smile on everybody's face. I want to give the haters something to hate on. I want to give the positive something, something to smile about and laugh about. I want to give my friends and I just a, you know, just a big smile and a hell. I'm happy, happy, joy, joy. Just give cool. me a big hug. Okay. okay yeah. All right. So now when people are talking about that, this honest sport, how hard you know, train hard, your fights easy, this and that. No, like he. It's life. Life is not fair sometimes, period, flat out. This sport, any sport, any competition, sometimes it's just, how many times have you seen a really good fighter that everybody knows busted their butt? There's fighters out there, I've done it. I've busted my butt. I've given everything, I've sacrificed. There's no way the other guy trained harder than me. I put in miles, I cried on rides, I cried in training. I would literally be crying in a round because I'm so tired and beat up and ah, angry at everything, cutting weight. Literally, I'm uh, crying and don't want to give up. And you've gone out and it just, you get caught. It happens, you know, you're human. It's life. Sometimes it's just not meant to be your day. Sometimes it's just not meant to go your way, you know, and it's just, that's what's heartbreaking for uh, take for instance one of our fighters who just fought he was undefeated he goes into a fight and he's doing so well he trains so hard did all the right things you know goes in the fight in the first 10 seconds 11 seconds that's caught with a punch you know and I tell everybody when we do our fights about odds you know we want to take odds of seven out of out of ten fights we win seven times at least there's no in this sport in any sport but especially this sport there's no hundred percent there's no, oh, for sure he's going to win. There's always that puncher's chance with these little gloves or submissions, whatever. And, you know, that's how it is. So, yeah, life and this sport is not fair. You know, train your butt off, do everything you need to, and nine times out of ten, eight times out of ten, you will come out on top, but there will be that time. Have I ever been able to appreciate the moments I've already had, you know, like at the King of the Cage or UFC? More and more every day now, I look back that I'm coming to the end of it, and I really get to sit back and say, wow, I can't believe I accomplished that. And it, it's, uh, I've found some really cool things lately, and that's one of them. You know, that fight with Yoshida, even the fight with Rory McDonald. I lost that fight, first fight in the UFC. I made it to my dream after freaking almost killing myself, suicide down. 10 years, you know, never thought I'd get there, finally get there, and I actually outstruck Roy McDonald first round, woo! Gave him armbar, but no, I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that statistic. I'm proud of going into the UFC and getting a victory. How many fighters could wish they could say they made it to the UFC? How many fighters have made it to the UFC and never got a win? And then to say I actually got a win there, that's really special for me because that's such it's the highest of all level competitions, you know? And in 10 years from now, I know I'll be sitting at some bar, I'll be a has-been and nobody. I'll probably be shaped like a pear. I'll have plaid with polka dots or some, I'll have some jacked up combination and there'll be some like kid that's out of high school and yeah, dude, dude, let's catch fights and he's like, oh yeah, let's get some bats on planet. And I'll be sitting there eating my little curly fries or whatever I'm eating, and then and I'm gonna be like laughing the whole time. So like, yeah, I was like that once. <laughs> Woo! Prediction for the fight is pain. <laughs> no, uh, prediction of the fight is uh, it's gonna be a tough fight for both of us, but my hand's gonna be raised. No way. There's no way. I I, I can't accept anything less. I busted my butt. I know the odds. I know we, we talked about that, the chances and stuff, but. I'm winning this fight. I'm gonna have that hand raised. I'm gonna give Savant a hug and say, "Hey, I'll go buy you a drink." Um, and then, uh, hey, come see me fight January 17th, Bellator, on Spike TV. Aaron True, I love you. Adrian, if I was good, have your baby. I love you. <laughs>